Of course, uh, welcome to Ask Your Pediatrician, and of course, uh, this program is uh, targeted at um, raising awareness when it comes to the health of um, children, and of course, uh, just what mothers need to know about some of the common problems that obviously children tend to suffer in, uh, during uh, different times of a year. I'm your host Nelson Zulu and of course uh, today's program is uh, addressing the issue of uh, sore throats and how they also affect the heart of uh, a child. I'm joined uh, by uh, Dr. John Musuku who is uh, a pediatric consultant uh, cardiologist uh, from uh, UT8 uh, Children's uh, Clinic who is going to help us really understand what sore throats are and of course how they affect the health of the child and of course how they affect the heart condition as well. Dr. Msuku, thank you so much for coming. Welcome to the program. Thank you, Mr. Zulu, for having me. Good to have you today. First things first, what are sore throats? Uh, maybe before I proceed, let me make a correction. Mm -hmm. I'm from the Invest Teaching Hospital, Children's UTH. Hospital, mm -hmm. yeah, in UTH. Yeah. So basically, sore throat, basically it's uh, inflammation of the throat. And uh, there are various structures in the throat that get inflamed. And uh, for every third child that you see, one may be having a sore throat. And for every hundred children that you may see at a given time, at least three have a sore throat. Yeah, so it's a very common condition. And uh, sometimes people uh, take it lightly. Yeah, so hence, w w that's the reason why we want to raise awareness that the sore throat, even if it is simple, may actually have detrimental effects. Yeah, because what starts with a simple sore throat, because of immunological reactions, can end up having inflammation of the heart and then having to damage the heart permanently. Yeah, and treating the heart when it's affected becomes very complicated. So that's why it's our duty to ensure that parents, each time a child has fever, uh, they should ensure that uh, that fever is not due to a sore throat. Yeah, and how do they know this is due to a sore throat? It could be that a child will be having difficulties in swallowing, who have fever, who have inflamed glands around the neck. Yeah, so those are some of the um, symptoms. The other thing is that this sore throat can be caused by various germs. Yeah, and uh, the one which we dread the most, it's a germ called strep. So in simple terms, we call it strep throat. Yeah, to differentiate it from other causes of sore throat, such as viruses which cause common cold or flu. Um. Having obviously um, touched on the aspect of um, how sore throats are caused and of course some of the symptoms in terms of how a mother can know that my child has got sore throats, let's talk about the most vulnerable um, periods of a child's life to, to, to sore throats. Which period can uh, or do most children really uh, become victims to this particular condition or disease? Yes, uh, sore throat can occur in any child. Yeah, even adults. Yeah, but I think the commonest is uh, during the first five years of life. And this is very important because if somebody has got strep throat in the first five years, this is where the immunity is very, very aggressive. Yeah, so once you have a sore throat, and especially due to this bacteria, what happens is that your body provokes an immune response. And then this immune response tends to be generalized. And one of the organs that are affected is the heart. The other organs could be the brain, could be the joints, and the skin. Yeah. So I would say the first five years of life is very, very important for them to produce this immunological reaction that can culminate into complications of the heart. What are some of the risk factors that might predispose a child to developing sore throats? Yes. Uh, remember, uh, a cold, for instance, this is quite common. It could be seasonal, right? However, this bacteria called strep, 
who tend to thrive where there is somebody who is a carrier. And if you are a carrier and then you are in a place where you can shed this bacteria, then that becomes a predisposing factor. So which are the areas where somebody can shed and spread this infection? It's basically like in a family setup. Children are sleeping in one bedroom, or there could be an adult. So basically it's overcrowding. So wherever there is overcrowding, that becomes a recipe for spreading the bacteria. It could be overcrowded homes, overcrowded schools, yeah. Overcrow any area where there's overcrowding, the infection is bound to spread. If it's a flu, that's uh, much easier because that could be uh, self-limiting. But for the bacteria, in as much as it could be self-limiting, the complications are very, very grave. So hence, if somebody has a sore throat, ensure that this child is examined by a doctor. Let's avoid using traditional medicines or these other remedies that we use. Yeah. It's better a trained practitioner looks at this child to ascertain whether it's a bacteria or a virus. Yeah. So the bacteria sore throats are very easy to identify. Yes. A lot of pain in the throat when swallowing. When you look at it, you see it's very red. And then sometimes you may even see some exudates, some secretions, which look like pus. Yeah. And then you examine the nodes, they're very, very painful. Yeah. So that most likely, even if you don't take a laboratory sample, those are the ones we are saying should be treated aggressively, especially if you can't take a laboratory sample. And treatment is very cheap. It's just giving an antibiotic, which is a penicillin. Penicillin could be taken either as syrup, capsules, tablets, or even injections. Yeah, and there's one injection which we advocate, especially for those who may not finish their course of antibiotics, which is benzathin penicillin. Just one jab can actually clear the infection, and that medicine takes longer in the body. What should be the reaction when um, a mother, a father, realizes that perhaps my child is developing sore throats? Uh, naturally, the first thing to do, they may want to attempt to give medication. Yeah, they may want to give maybe salt to clean the throat with their th thumbs or whatever. Is that advisable? It's not advisable. What's advisable is to seek help early. Let somebody look at that child's throat. And remember I said sometimes sore throat could be to, due to, to a flu, but you can tell that this is due to a flu because, or to a common cold, because somebody will be sneezing, has a runny nose. There could be other members within the household who may be having the same symptoms. So that one most likely. And if you look at the throat, it may not be so inflamed or not so red. Yeah. So... Those are the areas where, but where if you cannot differentiate between strep sore throat and viral, what we advocate is that it's better you give an antibiotic yeah, because you're not going to lose anything. Yeah, it's better you treat. If it's strep sore throat, you've done a good job because you are trying to prevent between the two, complications. Between the two, which, which one is, is more common in Zambian communities more difficult to treat and more dangerous between the two uh, types of uh, uh, sore throats that you've just alluded to briefly? Uh, looking at uh, the number of children that we see with complicated heart disease presenting to us when the disease is already taking place, we can extrapolate that uh, strep sore throat is quite common in the community because we are able to see uh, the complications as they present to us. However, there are so many people who present with sore throats when you go to the clinics. If you look at the register, so many people. Yeah. So what we are advocating is that it's for the clinician. Always when a child presents with fever, even if they haven't complained of sore throat, especially the smaller ones, they may not complain. We always have to examine the throat. Let's examine the ears. It's very important because that's where 
most of the time infection hides. Yeah. Some children have been treated as malaria when they've got sore throat, they've got ear infection. Yeah. So my appeal is that as health workers, let's always examine the throat and the ears of children who present to our health facilities. There is a common belief that, you know, after administering perhaps, you know, water with uh, a concoction of soda and salt, perhaps it can definitely clear the sore throat. Uh, how true is that, that, you know, that con concoction can? And can sore throats go away on their own? Uh, that kind of remedy is used to basically ameliorate or to relieve the symptoms. Yeah. And even if you have got a bacterial sore throat, the symptoms can be relieved. And sometimes the body can mount a strong immune system or response, and actually the throat can actually be cleared completely, especially if it's viral. Even, if it, even bacteria it can be cleared. But the problem is that with subsequent sore throats, you may find that you are going to mount a more aggressive response that may be exaggerated and that may actually end up affecting the heart valves, the valves in the heart. Yeah. So that's why we are saying always treat sore throats which you deem could be due to bacterial infection yeah, so with antibiotics. This, so at this level, doctor, maybe now you can help us understand the link between sore throats and the heart. I think uh, for the last 15 minutes, you have uh, related sore throats to the heart. What is the link there? How do sore throats affect the heart? Yes. So what happens is that um, when this bacterial sore throat caused by strep, okay, uh, when this infection uh, is present, the body tries to remove the bacteria by mounting its own immune re response. Right? But if you've got antibiotics, then the bacteria is killed bef before the body mounts an immune response. Yeah. However, if you don't give antibiotics, the body mounts a strong immune response. Now, that immune response becomes dangerous to oneself. Yeah, because what happens is that the antibodies that will be produced within that reaction will go and attack certain structures of the body. And one of them are the heart valves, the valves which are found in the heart. So with that immune response, what happens is that you've got what we call inflammation. Yeah, because a lot of blood will go to that area. So there will be swelling, okay? And then as the inflammation recedes, that valve which was swollen now gets complicated. Normally the valve controls the blood to flow forwards and backwards. Now when it's inflamed and then when it has healed and then it is scarred, that valve gets damaged. It no longer becomes competent. Yeah. So it becomes smaller as well as incompetent. Whereby, whereby it will be allowing blood to flow when it's not supposed to flow backwards. Yeah. And with time the heart gets so affected, the heart tends to get tired. The heart develops heart failure. Yeah. And that may be actually the first presentation of these children, just presenting with heart failure in the hospital. Yeah. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, today we are discussing uh, sore throats and uh, their effect on uh, the condition of the heart of a child. And of course, um, for your contributions and for your questions, the number is uh, scrolling on your screen. It's actually still on the screen there, 0955 5016, 0955 5016. You can send in your questions and, of course, your observations, your queries to that number. And I believe that Dr. Msuko should be able to respond to your satisfaction. Remember, we are discussing sore throat and how they affect the heart. Are there any home remedies that are usually recommended as, you know, um, the first line of defense even before a child is taken for professional health care? Uh, health uh, healthcare, uh, uh, are there any home remedies that can be given to a child? Yeah, and especially if you feel that the sore throat is due to 
a common cold. We can use these simple remedies just to relieve the symptoms. Like if the child is secreting a lot, you want to remove the mucus, you may want to give something that may dry the mucus. Yeah. However, of course, if it's bacterial, it will be very painful. So maybe the first thing you need to do is to give a painkiller. Then take that child to a health facility for examination. Don't start giving antibiotics. Self-medicated antibiotics are not advised. Yeah, let the health worker decide whether to give an antibiotic or not to give. So when should a mother, a father, be concerned and take the child to the doctor? Whenever a child is sick, as a parent you should be concerned. And it will be important to seek uh, health advice earlier. Yeah, because most of the time people tend to overlook certain symptoms. The child is not well, has fever. They are waiting, to th thinking that the child will get better. And now when things get worse, that's when they rush the child to a health facility. So my appeal is that we should have this uh, habit of taking children to the hospital early yeah, to go and check so that you can be reassured if there is nothing serious. Yeah, we've seen a lot of children coming to the hospital very sick and then you wonder where were the parents? Why did it take so long to bring the child to the hospital or to a nearest health facility? After diagnosis has been made, how long does treatment take? Normally, if we are treating for a bacterial sore throat, as I mentioned, you may need to give antibiotics for at least 10 days. Okay? However, there are other modalities of giving injections. I mean medication. You may want to give intramuscular injection. Yeah, and in this case, we've got a drug that you only give one dose, and that can last for about two to three weeks. Yeah, so uh, that's the best actually treatment we recommend, especially where you are not sure whether somebody is going to finish oral antibiotics. We've been talking about two kinds of uh, sore throats here, viral and, and, bacterial. And, and bacterial, exactly. Is the length of the treatment the same and is the same medication used for the two? No, I made this point very clear that you only use antibiotic if you feel it's a bacterial sore throat. Mm -hmm. for, for the viral sore throat, those are self-limiting. As the child recovers from maybe a common cold, the sore throat will also disappear. But during that time, you want to give medication to relieve the symptoms. If there is fever, if there is pain, or if there is nasal blockage, you may want to give those medications just to relieve the symptoms. All right, so 0955 5, 5, 5, that is um, the number where you're sending your messages to. And very, very soon, we should be getting to our inboxes to check what we have in there so that uh, Dr. Msoo can start responding to some of your queries and, of course, to some of your observations as well. Let's talk about prevention. How do we prevent sore throats? Yes. Uh, if we look at the medical realm, we can actually have got four strategies of prevention. Okay. So the first one is primordial prevention. Primordial prevention. This is basically, we are saying, health promotion. Okay. You want to promote good health of the people. Okay, you want to improve the standard of living. Yeah. Once you reduce on overcrowding, like in homes, yeah, let people have better housing. Yeah, and of course, so that is primordial prevention. Then you move to primary prevention, meaning that you identify people who may have possible bacteria sore throats and you treat them aggressively. All you are trying to do is you are trying to prevent a process that may lead to development of a heart disease. Okay, so that is primary prevention. 
Secondary prevention is where somebody already had this overreaction of a sore throat. Okay, so they develop the condition known as rheumatic fever. So what you want is to prevent that rheumatic fever to recur. Okay, so you put them on long-term preventive therapy, whereby you can put them on injections. They receive injections every month. Okay, and then there could be those that already have heart damage. Either they've had an operation or not. They still continue with it secondary prevention okay till such a time when you feel that prevention can be stopped yeah and then the last one is basically tertiary prevention where you want to ensure that these people have had uh, heart problems have had surgery are maintained in good health okay so that you are able to put certain precautionary measures to prevent further damage uh, to, to, to that to that valve yeah. So basically, that also speaks to uh, a few f the five pillars uh, of health, okay, which is we want to promote health, then we want to prevent disease, and those that pre present with the disease, we ensure that we treat them, yeah, and then we maintain them in good life. Yeah. And those that uh, uh, have had maybe further treatment with complications, we want to rehabilitate them back. Yeah. And lastly, we want to provide palliative care for those that we cannot uh, be able to offer treatment. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, just now we go for our first uh, commercial break. When we come back, we also want to look at uh, management of uh, sore throat. Let's say our child is on treatment. What are some of the do's and don'ts that we need to observe? And of course, when it comes to dietary needs, because at that particular level, you'd find that a child might actually um, uh, develop um, a bad attitude towards eating because the child might actually develop, you know, uh, might not uh, find it easy to obviously swallow. So how do you manage that particular aspect of a child? Because once a child is on treatment, also dietary issues become of paramount importance at that particular level. So obviously as we get back from the break, that is a, uh, something that I would love Dr. Msuko to, um, uh, to talk about as well. And of course advise parents on how they can keep on making sure that their children are eating whilst they are on treatment of uh, sore throats as well. For now, we go for a break. We'll be back shortly. Daily exposure to different environments leads to a buildup of germs, oil, and dirt. These can cause blemishes and uneven skin tone. You need new Dettol Even Tone. It removes 99.9% .9 of germs and is formulated to remove excess oil and dirt, helping to reduce the appearance of blemishes, giving your family the confidence of healthy, even toned skin. For an even better you, new Dettol Even Tone. Dettol, be 100% sure. Best music videos, all genres, every day, 12 hours to 13.30, on your favorite channel, 
QTV Ngoma Ngoma every day 12 hours to 1330 We love local. Lele, 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 lele. 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 And much more. Z Rampage, Fridays 9 to 12 on QFM. All right, so welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are discussing sore throats and their effects uh, on the heart. And of course, uh, Dr. John Musoko, he is, who is a consultant, pediatrician, a cardiologist from the University uh, Teaching Hospital, Children's uh, Hospital is uh, here just uh, to help us understand more about uh, you know sore throats and of course messages have already started coming in to, and maybe before we can even come to you know uh, the management and the other aspect maybe let me uh, uh, get to the messages because some of the messages um, people are trying to find out more about a few things that you had shared earlier on. The first one says, um, is it advisable to clean the sore throat with salt? Uh, <clears throat> as I mentioned already, these are some of the remedies that parents want to do uh, before taking the child to the nearest health facility. Yeah, so I would say that that should not delay taking the child to the hospital or to a health facility for examination. Yeah, because what happens is that you may clean the child with salt and the child starts feeling better and you think the child uh, is recovering when actually things are getting worse. Yeah, so my advice would be to take the child to, to the hospital. What I forgot to mention here is that sometimes just bad breath in children may be a sign of sore throat. Yeah, so if a child who didn't have a bad breath, develops a bad breath, always look at the throat. They may be having a sore throat infection. Abdominal pain sometimes in children may be a symptom of sore throat. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, the, the, the next one here says, um, uh, Doctor, I have uh, hemia. Sometimes neck don't feel okay throat blocked. How would you help this one? Uh, can you read again? Um, a doctor, I have uh, a hernia. Sometimes neck don't feel okay. Throat blocked. Yes, yeah, sometimes uh, people may have excessive secretions. Mucus, for instance. So you feel like you're getting blocked. So the best thing is to get a mucolytic, a drug that will make that mucus to soften. That will help to clear the throat. Okay, yeah. great. Um, I'm Mrs. Kabwe from Wansha. My child complains of sore throat and a pain on his um, upper palate of the mouth. What could be the cause? Yeah, as I mentioned, this child could just be having a throat infection. Yeah, so the best thing is can we have that child examined by a doctor there in Wansha? Yeah, they can go to Thompson Hospital, Ron Jen Hospital, or even Luansha Mine Hospital. Or the other clinics around Luansha. I'm sure somebody will be able to help them. If, if, if a child is diagnosed of a sore throat, and of course treatment commences, um, issues of that becomes, uh, comes in because the child will now be struggling to eat. How best can parents administer food to their children at that particular level and any suggestion of uh, the kind of food that parents can be giving to a child at that particular level when the treatment is on 
for sore throat. Yeah. So one of the symptoms of a sore throat is pain. Mm -hmm. yeah, it could be a small child may just be very irritable, crying. Okay. So the best thing is to provide maybe a painkiller to start with, and then to try and console that child. Yeah, and then if the child is unable to swallow, especially solids, maybe I would, I would advocate that we go to liquid uh, dart to start with. Light, maybe light porridge, liquid dart. Yeah, and then you give slowly. Yeah, don't force the child. Give slowly till the child is satisfied. Yeah. And then if they can completely not feed, the best thing is to take them to the hospital so that we can see how best we can maintain the hydration of this child, how best we can introduce feeds. Yeah, there are various ways of feeding this child when they are very sick. Yeah, but in the home setup, the advice is that we need to be patient and then start giving small, small feeds, uh, maybe semi-solid or even up to liquid. Always ensure that you've added continue giving fruits, uh, if you can blend some of the feeds and then give it to the child. Yeah. Interesting. All right, so make sure that those messages um, keep on uh, coming in and of course uh, just make sure that uh, they are direct and straightforward and make sure that your messages are based on what we are discussing right now. Quite a lot of messages coming in, parents asking on the usage of salty water, soda water to clear sore throats. I'm sure that uh, Dr. Musuk, I think, has, has uh, um, answered that question on uh, several occasions. When treatment is done, are there any possibilities that sore throats can bounce back? Yes. Remember, we are living in this uh, uh, world where it's full of uh, organisms full of germs. Viruses will always be with us. Bacteria will always be with us. So, the recurrency or this whole thrust bouncing back is a known phenomenon. Yeah. So if today you may be treated, you can still have a sore throat. That's why we are saying, if it's due to that strep throat bacteria, which can complicate into the heart, that one will ensure that we treat aggressively. Yeah. Always ensure that that sore throat, which you feel could be due to bacteria, is treated aggressively. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many times you treat it. Because what you are trying to do is that once the heart is damaged, you are trying to prevent the damage to the heart. Which, remember, when it happens, it becomes very, very costly to treat or to fix. Because it means opening the, the chest, going and fixing that heart either removing the valve or just repairing that valve. It's very costly. You're talking of more than 20,000 US dollars if you are to undergo an operation. Yeah. Interesting. I, I think we've talked much about prevention, obviously, and treatment, but I haven't, I haven't heard you touch on the aspect of curing th sore throats here. So I don't know whether sore throats can be cured completely or maybe they can just be treated. Um, so maybe I use the term figuratively. What I meant was when somebody has a sore throat and you treat them, at that point they are cured of that episode okay. of the sore throat. Mm -hmm. It does not mean that they are immune. They can have a sore throat if they come in contact with that bacteria. And remember, there are certain factors which predispose people to having recurrent sore throats. It could be the environment. It could be themselves as hosts. They may just be prone or predisposed to having sore throats because of certain genetic mechanisms of our immune system. Yeah. And then, sometimes it's the same bacteria which causes a sore throat. Yeah, some bacteria are less aggressive. Others are very, very aggressive. So once you've got all these factors at play, then your sore throat is bound to manifest. Okay. So now, um, when, when um, a child is, um, is predisposed to a recurrence 
of sore throat and of course uh, they are brought back to the hospital for example uh, to you to to uh, to UTH uh, children's hospital do you administer the same treatment that you had administered before or maybe there is some considering the factors around them, you change treatment yes there are various protocols that we follow yeah so each child is treated differently depending on how they are presenting mm -hmm. considering the history and what we've examined yeah and sometimes we've had to consult our colleagues who are the ear nose throat specialists the ENT specialists yeah so those are some of the children where we refer to them so they can examine for us properly and then be able to advise how we we manage and how we follow up those children sometimes these children may have very very big tonsils yeah so they will advise if there are any surgical interventions to be done or if we need to take a certain type of regimen in terms of treating these children yeah let's get to ndola where chisha is asking my child seemed to have a big throat and i think it is affecting him because he usually have beaver what could be the problem yeah so these are the kind of children we should be referring to the ENT specialists mm -hmm. yeah, because they are the specialists of the throat they will be able to examine and then be able to advise so I would urge them in Indola there I'm sure they've got an ENT section or specialists who can advise yeah but of course any doctor or any health worker should be able to examine before they refer to the ENT specialist. From Dola, we get to Kitwe. Um, hello, I'm Hilaria calling from Kitwe. I think she's been trying to call because I can recognize this number. So she says, um, is it normal to experience an, I, I, uh, an IH and mouth going on one side of the face due to sore throat? So in line with this question, Maybe I might also want uh, you to possibly help us understand whether sore throats can uh, also develop into other things, for example, tonsillitis as well. Yes, so when I say sore throat, I'm being very general. Yeah. So tonsillitis is part of sore throat. Yeah. And you remember that area is called the pharynx. Yeah. So it has got various structures around it. So in general, we're calling it sore throat. Yeah. As to whether the sore throat I'm talking about can cause deviation of the mouth to one side, uh, not what I mentioned in terms of symptomatology. Mm -hmm. yeah. For such, we really need to examine properly and then be able to investigate. What that means is that some of your nerves which control the muscles on the face may be affected or may be inflamed yeah and the commonest cause for that are, are viruses yeah so we call that as facial palsy yeah due to viruses and then of course we need to determine whether it's just an ordinary viral infection or there are other uh, manifestations of the central nervous system Doctor, I have a heart problem, mitral valve prolapse, due to sore throats. I'm on bends, a thin. Uh, I'm on bends, a thin from 2004 to date. I want to find out whether it can be inherited to my children or it can be passed on to my children. Should this condition be subjected to a special diet? Yeah, mitral valve prolapse. Uh, basically, it's a condition where the valve is not closing in line with the other valve. You know the valve, there are leaflets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's supposed to close uh, in that line. But if there is somewhat mismatch, yeah, so there are certain, we call that prolapse, and there are various degrees. Yeah. The commonest cause, basically, it's uh, somebody's born with that problem. Uh, as to whether it's due to sore throat that caused rheumatic fever and then just caused rheumatic heart disease, we need to look at the morphology of the valves. 
yeah, before we can even start administering the benzathin penicillin. Yeah. So for such kind of a thing, I would advise that maybe they can be reassessed, either in Indola or they can come to Lusaka. We can come and reassess and check whether that is really uh, true mitral valve products or not. Yeah, because we need to have expert hands to be able to make that kind of diagnosis. Yeah. What are the chances that maybe one of the children would have this condition? Uh, first, we need to determine whether it's a true mitral valve prolapse. Mm -hmm. And then we need to check, are there any other associated features in that person? Is there any family history of such before we are able to say whether the children will be able to develop that. And if it's due to rheumatic heart disease, we can also advise. But there are certain things that we look at before we say this is mitral valve prolapse. Yeah. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, you're still watching Ask Your Pediatrician. And of course, today we are discussing uh, sore throats and how they affect um, the heart. And of course, remember, our center stage is uh, children, exactly. So in case you've got a child who's got sore throat and you haven't yet taken them to for, you know, um, um, specialized treatment for expert uh, 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 healthcare services, make sure that you take that step and, of course, make sure that uh, experts diagnose and put your child on treatment. Something that I forgot to ask you, even as we wind up, doctor, is how easy, I don't know whether it's complicated, how easy is it to treat a sore throat, especially that have already, you know, started affecting the heart of a child? How easy is it to treat them? Um, it's very easy to treat a sore throat that is due to this bacteria because we have medication and they work very well. There is no known resistance to penicillin to that bacteria that causes that sore throat that may complicate into a heart disease. Yeah. So the best thing is it's timely treatment and adequate treatment of the sore throat. Then we'll be able to prevent complications of that sore throat causing rheumatic heart disease. Because once rheumatic heart disease are set in, life expectancy reduces yeah and we don't want that and that life expectancy reduces in very young people yeah. these are children or young adults who are dying who we could have saved by preventing them having a complicated sore throat as the child is growing how are the chances or um or how are the chances of that child becoming, you know, uh, more prone to sore throats? Yeah, the good thing is that these sore throats are actually more frequent in younger children. Mm -hmm. But as the child grows, the episodes tend to reduce. Yeah. However, there could be some few adults who may actually still be having a lot of these uh, symptoms of sore throats or basically recurrences. Yeah, but the number tends to reduce. So that's why the catch here is that every child that presents with fever, let's examine the throat. Every child that develops abdominal pains, let's examine the throat because we'll be able to pick so many children with sore throats. Because if we don't examine, then we tend to miss. And remember, I said most of these sore throats are self-limiting. Yeah. We'll get back to Ndola. Martha say, is asking, are sore throats also a side effect of heart disease? No. Basically, what we are doing here, we are linking the sore throat mm -hmm. causing or affecting the heart, yeah, not the other way. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So, Martha, Martha well, obviously, you got that one loud and uh, clear as well. Okay, so we have about 10 minutes, uh, so if uh, you are quick at hand, you can slot in a question that you might have, and I'm sure that um, uh, Dr. Msoko should be able to go through that and be able to handle it. 
as well. As, as, as we wind up, obviously we have discussed quite a lot of issues and of course a lot of things. Now, um, myths will always be there. How should parents, because you know, we are dealing with parents who, who are educated, others who are less educated, parents who have got, who are coming from, you know, highly traditional homes, others who are coming from conventional homes and stuff like that. Myths will always be there, you know, beliefs will always be there, and so on and so forth. Uh, how should parents handle myths, beliefs, when it comes to a child developing sore throats? Really, there should be no beliefs or myths here. Uh, a child who has a sore throat is a sick child. Yeah, and they need to be taken to a health facility to be examined. Because that child will be treated with good medication. Yeah. Those who believe in uh, alternative uh, medicines like herbs, uh, witch doctors, that tends to delay the treatment. Yeah, and then what happens is that now here is a child who should have been saved or treated comes in with complications of the heart, yeah. which needs now to be cured. How do we fix that heart, which now uh, is affected? Yeah. We've had a number of surgeries done here in UTH, operations on the heart. Uh, some patients have had, had been, have had to be sent abroad, and we are very happy now that we are having cardiac surgeries and then construction of a cardiac hospital or center is being undertaken by government yeah, at the specialist hospital. Yeah. So we intend to actually to treat most of these children or patients who have been affected with rheumatic heart disease locally. Yeah. But remember, even if it's local treatment, the cost is very high. Yeah. Ruth says, uh, I'm not a child, but I, ha but I have been having sore throats at least once or twice in a month for years now. I don't know what the problem is and what can I do. This has also, uh, um, 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 uh, has also caught my attention as well because I'm thinking, okay, once or twice in a month, does it mean that, you know, they're not treated completely? Yeah, so that's, that's the kind of information we need to get. What treatment are they taking? And who is treating them? Yeah. And if this uh, is commonplace, then I would advise that let them go and see a physician and possibly be referred to an ENT specialist. So they look at the throat and they determine why they are having these recurrences. Yeah. But it will be important that each time they have a recurrence, they are treated adequately by a health worker. We get to Kitwe. Edson is saying, uh, Doctor, I have been facing that topic which is under discussion and it also resulted in uh, sternum paining. What could be the major problem to that? I would have loved to know whether this person's heart has been examined to check how are the valves working. Yeah, so that if the valves are not working well, then we can determine whether is this because of rheumatic heart disease we are discussing, or it could be due to other things. Yeah, sternal pain can be caused by so many things. Yeah, it's even common basically in uh, people who are growing up, the adolescents, because that's the time now they've got that rapid growth spurt. They are growing very rapidly. So some may tend to develop pain in the sternum. Yeah. Or on the sternum. So Belenge, I believe, is from Kitwe, is also asking to say, apart from pain, any other symptoms that can help a parent know that these are th uh, sort of... Yes, so pain on swallowing. Uh, yes. When you examine, you may see very inflamed uh, throat, there may be even be some exudates there, whitish stuff looking like pus. Uh, when you touch the neck, you may feel very painful glands. Yeah. And then, as I mentioned, abdominal pains, even bad breath. These are some of the features 
of a soft fraud. Yeah. But if it's associated with a common code, then you may have things like running nodes, uh, blocking of the nodes, yeah. and generally feeling, you know, fluish, as it were. Yeah. Finally, um, in, in line with your last statement there, do we have a situation or do we have a, um, a situation where, you know, sore throats are more, you know, common in this particular um, kind of season and weather, or can they occur during any particular weather depending on the exposure? Yes. So I would say that um, there is a sometimes seasonal variation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there could also be environmental variation. Yeah. Some people tend to have sore throats uh, when it's uh, maybe in the wet season. But of course, common things, if you put a cluster, you tend to have more viral sore throats during cold season. Yeah, and then you may have more bacterial infection during the hot season. But of course, remember that diseases can happen anytime. Yeah. Dr. Msuku, thank you so much for coming through today. Thanks so much for having me. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, that marks the end of our discussion today. We've been looking at uh, sore throats and how they affect the heart. Quite uh, an amazing response from our viewers out there. And of course, hopefully that, you know, Dr. Msuku has been of help. Others actually um, uh, were coming through with uh, personal experiences in relation to sore throats. I hope that uh, he has been of help. If you're in Lusaka, please. If you've got a child who is more prone to sore throats, who usually has recurrency of these sore throats, please make sure that you take them for expert checkups. Okay, you can actually go to UTH Children's Hospital and you're going to find experts there. Dr. Msuku will be there and of course other experts will be there just to make sure that they provide that assistance. If you're outside Lusaka, well, you can go to any hospital just which is near you and they will be able to provide that expert help as well just avoid self-diagnosis self uh, uh, uh you know uh, uh self-diagnosis and of course uh, uh, uh self-medication as well avoid that kind of a trend make sure that you get professional uh, uh, uh help from healthcare providers and they will be able to provide that that is what we advocate I know. I remember one of the messages. Somebody was asking, "What is the best treatment for sore throats?" Well, I'm sure that Dr. Msoko did talk about some, you know, antibiotics that are used and so on and so forth. But he's not saying go into a drugstore and buy those antibiotics. What he's saying is that when you go to the hospital, that is the kind of medication that will be able to give you, and of course, to make sure that you know it is treated and handled professionally. We'll be back next week as well with another topic of discussion that uh, will also be of uh, interest, especially to many parents out there. So just make sure that, you know, you keep a date with us and we'll be there. Thank you so much for your time. Until next week, it's bye-bye.